What's up guys, my name is Derek. I'm gonna teach you guys how to cut wood using the band saw inside the wood shop. First, we're gonna do a, a circle cut here and then I'm gonna teach you how to do a little bit inside notch. The first thing is we're gonna go over is some safety rules. First off, your guard here. You can see that there's too much room between the wood and our guard here. So, before you come up to this knob here and adjust it, you, you want to loosen the knob over here. So there's a knob over here. Don't touch either of these right here. Nothing, only these two knobs that are labeled. First, you're gonna loosen this guy. Then you're going to turn this so that this goes down or up to where you need it. So what we're looking for is as we bring this down, we wanna be just above. So what I do is I bring it to the wood and then come right up above. Make sure you have plenty of clearance in there. Once it's at your height, you then lock down this top knob right here. It doesn't need to be cranked on, just nice and firm, nothing too hard. Once you're set, that's where we're gonna be working. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut around this circle. Now you don't wanna cut directly on your circle because we're gonna use the belt sander to bring up our edge right up to that line. So you wanna give yourself some extra, you can always take away. So we'll, first, I'll show you how you do that. But first, safety rules, safety glasses, you wanna roll up your sleeves if you have sleeves on. Uh, if you have long hair, you're gonna pull that back. Anything hanging, put that away. Any rings or watches, you're gonna take those off as well. Uh, that's important because this machine will grab you. Now you can use this uh, to do straight cuts if you want, especially if you're repeating, that's fine. If you need to, you can use this to do smaller cuts. Bring it up like this, and then you can use this to do smaller cuts that this wouldn't be able to get to. So if you need to do something that's a little bit smaller, you can use this guy here, bring it up, and now you can do smaller cuts uh, to trim pieces a little bit smaller than you need. This is also good for when you're cutting. You can use this to finish your cut and guide so that if you cut this, it's not your finger. So you wanna use this instead of your hands. The first thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna cut a 12 inch circle. This is my 12 inch by 12 inch piece of wood here. I'm gonna cut along this circle. And first things first, to start the machine, you pull out. To stop the machine, you're gonna push in. If this yellow key is missing, that means there's something wrong with the bandsaw. If anything goes wrong, the bandsaw breaks, or if it's not working the way it should be, if something just doesn't seem right, please contact one of us, a TA, anybody, and uh, pull this yellow key out and bring it to us and let us know that something is wrong, or just let us know right away. Turn off the machine, come get one of us, and we can make sure that there's nothing wrong. Do not try to fix the machine yourself. So I'm gonna turn on the machine, it's gonna be really loud, and you can watch as I do this cut. Now it's a combination of push and pull. We do not want to push too hard. Let the, the saw do the cutting. As it's cutting, you're just gonna be pushing and turning, pushing and turning, and slowly work our way around. So. As you can see, it's not perfect. Got a little wonky there, that's totally fine. Because we're gonna go over to the belt center and I'm gonna show you how we can smooth these edges and make it nice and smooth and round and consistent. So you can see there's some little notches here. I'm gonna go through with the belt center and show you how we can smooth that all out and make it a really nice, perfect circle. Make sure that when you are done with your scrap bits that you throw them away or keep them. All right, now we're at the belt center. Uh, the belt center is gonna be going this direction. You also have a disc sander here. Uh, on the disc sander, you want to stay on this side because it's going to be spinning towards you. So if you do use that, if you use it here, it's going to want to pull up and hit you in the face. So make sure you're on this side. In this case, we're going to use the belt sander. Uh, now to turn it on, you need to turn it on over there. Make sure the vacuum comes on. That guy, this is on, this is off. So make sure you turn on that before you start running the, the belt sander. It prevents a lot more sawdust. <laughs> All I'm doing is bringing it up to the line. And then you can see 
washing has actually smoothed a lot of our edge here and it looks a lot nicer. When you are done, make sure to turn that guy. This is on, this is off. So now, now I'm gonna teach you how to do a notch. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna notch out a little piece. Now to do this, we're gonna go straight down this line, straight down this line. We'll go in and out. And then we're gonna come in at like a bit of a 45 and then another 45, 45, until we can get sideways and finish this cut. And then you can use sandpaper or a file to really straighten out those edges. But for this, we're just gonna keep taking triangle cuts out of this. So go ahead and watch. Watch really close here. That's a good example of when we can use this guy. So now with this guy, we can push this out and get our extra piece here and throw it away. Definitely use that. Now we're gonna come in this way and try to come in a little bit as tight as possible and start to turn it. Now you can see I came in a little tight, which is okay because I can back back out and start again over here. I'm try to turn a little bit tighter now, right to where I'm going for. Okay, then come straight out. And then using our guide here, push that piece out. straight as possible here and finish that up. Come out, watch your fingers, and turn it off. Clear out any little bits that are left hanging out there. And now we have our straight edge here. And if you want to, you can take a little bit of sandpaper and really smooth this out if you really need to. But that's how we're gonna do a notch. Now we're gonna go over drilling holes into this thing. All right guys, we're gonna go over uh, the drill press here. I got a set up here with a small drill press, uh, drill bit, and we're going to drill into this piece of wood right here. And I have a backstop. So this is a scrap piece of wood that I have here and I've clamped everything down. I'm gonna show you drilling a hole real quick and then I'll kind of show you how we can break it down and set it up for the next piece where we'll put a nice big hole in the center of this guy. So first thing, this is a kind of a pilot hole. It's really handy to drill pilot holes before we put a screw in. So I'm gonna show you how we do that real quick. This is on, this is off. On, off. If it's not working, then might be needed repairs or something like that. Come and see us. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go straight down and we're gonna drill straight through. Nice and slow. And at some point you'll see that kind of went through the whole thing. And I can turn it off. Once it stops, we can remove our piece here with these clamps. And now we have a hole all the way through. Now the reason for this backstop is that if you did it without the backstop, you'd have a blowout on this side. So I'll kind of show you what happens when you don't have that. So we'll put our clamps down here. Especially when you have a bigger hole, when you drill through without a backstop or a scrap piece, um, it will want to kind of mess up the back end. So I'll show you how that looks. That's just a pilot hole. And as I said, if you go bigger on these holes, you're gonna see that you're gonna get a little bit more destroyed. So that's kind of what we wanna prevent when we don't use a backstop. Um, so you always use a backstop to drill your holes. And the bigger that is, the bigger that's gonna be messed up on the backside. So keep that in mind. So now, kind of showed you the explanation of that. I want to dr drill a nice big hole into this. So I've got my backstop here. 
and my clamps here. Now, I probably want to clamp over here and over here to prevent this thing from spinning. So I'm going to move my clamp over here and kind of get my piece ready. But before I do that, I need a bigger drill bit. So this is a little too small. Uh, right here we have our key. This goes into the chuck and you're gonna turn it to loosen uh, this guy. So once you loosen this, it's got three jaws here that will leave, let this out. Now, if you can't get this out, that's okay. Over here, you're going to loosen this guy. So if you loosen here first, make sure that's nice and loose first, then you start to turn this. So you can actually adjust the height of this. If this is clamped down and you try to adjust this, it's going to bend this rod. We don't want to do that. So make sure this is nice and loose so that you can adjust your height with this guide. If it's too tight, it shouldn't take a whole lot of pressure to turn this thing. If it's too tight, come see us, we can check it out. Now I can remove my drill bit and I'm gonna replace it with another drill bit. Now we got these little guides here to tell you what size you're working with. So for example, you just put this through and that's a little too small, that's just right. That's a 1964 or 0.96. 0.296. So now that's what I'm gonna drill into this. So we're gonna bring this in here, same thing. If this is too, uh, not tall enough, you just lower this. Lower this guy, bring our drill bit in. Now the three jaws, as you turn, will get larger and smaller. Now you don't wanna bury this. So when your jaws come down, you can kind of see where this discolored. You wanna be right about right there, not on the actual part, the cutting part, but just above it. If you go too far out like this, you might need to that if you have to go that deep, but nothing you're gonna be working on is gonna be something that deep. But the problem with this being just a little bit holding onto it, it's gonna to wanna to spin or start to waver. So we wanna get as much as this without getting into the cutting area. So once you got there, you're gonna tighten it by hand and then using our key, you can use it on any one of these holes, but you're gonna come here and you're gonna just tighten it nice and snug so that this is actually tight and our drill bit's not gonna move. Now, we need to make sure that we can get to our height. So we're gonna bring our piece back up, the table back up. So we're pretty close, so we don't have to turn this thing three times. And then once we get to where we want, we can clamp this down so that our table doesn't actually move. Now, same thing, you don't need to over tighten this, just nice and snug. Then once we have our piece here, kind of align where we want. What I like to do is bring this to about right here and use it as a hold. I'm gonna adjust our clamps here, clamp down our piece there, and clamp our piece down right here. So now we've clamped down our piece, set our key over here. You can kind of see that we got plenty of room here to work. Our piece isn't gonna move. We have a backstop and we're just gonna slowly drill into this. Sometimes you have to do kind of a pecking action to really just clear out the, the wood. But so we're gonna watch this, turn this on. Same thing, kind of peck at it, okay? And then just slowly go at it. And you'll kind of feel it, you'll know about how deep it is and you can kind of see it on the drill bit. It's about right there, plenty of through. There, turn it off. hole right through our piece, right where we want it. And you can see we just barely nicked into that guy. And when you're done, go ahead and clean up all of your sawdust. Put your drill bit away. That's very important. So make sure to take this guy out. Loosen that. Take our drill bit out. You can leave this backstop here as well for other people, but make sure to clean up your sawdust using a, a broom and a dustpan. Now I'm gonna also teach you how we can use our pilot holes to make screwing in to our wood a little bit easier. So if we're screwing in, it's always handy to have a, a, a pre-drilled pilot hole and that just makes screwing into pieces of wood a little bit easier. So definitely want to do that for both your, the piece you're screwing into and the piece you're screwing to. So when you have that, you'll be much easier so you can kind of align what you need, have a hole there and where you're gonna drill, and then it will actually screw in a lot easier. You can also clamp your two pieces together so that as you screw this into the, the, your other piece, it doesn't wanna rise on you. So that's a little tip for you guys when you're screwing in two apart. 
if you have this down and you have your pilot holes aligned, you can actually screw into the piece when you need it and it will all align perfectly.